Hi guys, I'm Cody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm bringing you all the books I want to read this month. And considering it's already halfway through the month, wish me some bloody luck, because as always, I've got a ton of books here. <laughs> so this is real late, but I'm feeling real optimistic, clearly. But I have, as always, read some things already, so I'm going to talk to you about those real quick. So, the first book I picked up this month I borrowed from my friend and it's Iron Gold by Pierce Brown, which is the next instalment in the Red Rising series. This takes place a good ten years after the fact. And we're following Darrow still, but we have do have about four perspectives in here, and it's just about what's going on now, basically, in this world. I obviously can't tell you too much because it's, you know, part of a series. However, I did feel a little bit disappointed with this one, and I will tell you why at the end of the month, which isn't that far away anyway. <laughs> I then picked up a couple of graphic novels from my library that I've been very excited to read. The first one being Descender by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nujian? Yen? Nujian. I think so you pronounce it. This is volume one, Tin Stars, and I also read volume two, which is Machine Moon. So this is a dystopian series set in space, it's obviously a sci-fi, about a young boy who happens to be a robot named Tim. I really enjoyed this graphic novel for the art style which is very cool and there's lots of different types of races of humans and aliens and I found Tim to be absolutely adorable and I just feel for him and this is quite a dark graphic novel series, I mean the second one it just got a lot darker and yeah I'm, I'm completely enthralled by these now so I will be picking up the third hopefully soon and I'll let you know my full thoughts come the end of the month but as you can probably tell I really enjoyed these. <laughs> The next book I picked up was one that I was meant to read with Mel from Bookish Mel, sorry Mel, I completely forgot about it and then it was due from the library to go back, I couldn't renew it so I had basically a day to read it, so I thought why not, let's just let's just bash through it and that was Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Now this was one that I was really hyped to read because it's a fantasy standalone which is rare and also it, I've been told, well I basically heard that it's beautifully written and that I'll really enjoy it, so I picked it up. I don't know how to feel about it, you guys, if I'm being honest. So I have thoughts on this book. If you don't know what it's about, it's about a young girl named Agnieszka, I think it was, who is from a small village and she gets chosen by this guy who's nicknamed the Dragon, who is a wizard, to go and live with him for 10 years. And he does this, it's like a cycle. She just happens to be the next one chosen, although she did never expect to be chosen. And it's just about her experience and magic is involved. But there's a relationship. Yeah, I'll give you thoughts at the end of the month, guys. <laughs> I then picked up a book, well, I basically bought this book and read it immediately because I was just so excited to read it and kind of really curious about this one too. And that's Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. Now, I actually buddy read Night Film with Mel for Bookish Mel and we both absolutely loved it. However, this is a YA story from her. In this story, we're following a girl named B who's around 17 and she has just lost her boyfriend uh, about a year ago. He was killed and it's kind of an unsolved case and she hasn't spoken to any of her past friend group since those events. However, she believes that this friend group knows more about her boyfriend's death than they're letting on, so she goes and visits them for like kind of like a house party on one evening and the craziest thing happens to them. <laughs> they have a near accident that evening and then later on an old man knocks on the door and tells them that they are all dead. Not only that, but they are trapped in what this old man tells them to be a Neverworld Wake, which is basically a space between life and death. And to get out of this, only one of them can, and they have to be chosen, like a vote, between all five of them to be the one to live. The other four are going to die. As you can imagine, the vote isn't an easy thing for them to do, and they can never really come up with just one person that they want to save. So they end up repeating the same day over and over and over and over again, which is kind of like Groundhog Day, which is really cool. And also they obviously look into the, well, the accidental murder, possible suicide of her boyfriend who died a year ago. And this was a strange one. Full thoughts will be coming soon, but I'm still not sure how I feel about this one, if I'm being honest. Yeah. <laughs> I also recently read a middle grade that I was excited to give a try, and that's Furthermore by Tahara Murphy. Now this story is about Alice, who's a young girl who has no pigment in her skin, however she comes from a world which is very magical and colourful, as magic is kind of produced from colour in this land. However, Alice's father has gone missing a good few years ago now, and she finds herself, along with her friend, having to go and try and save him from a world which is known as Furthermore. 
I found this to be incredibly enchanting and lovely and very Alice in Wonderland-esque and I, yeah, I'm be picking up the next one very very soon guys, again, full thoughts, end of the month. Currently reading another to Harry Matthew book that I wasn't expecting to ever read. These were, this is one of those sequel, those YA series where I was like, nah, that's probably not for me. I'd heard so many bad things about it, but I'm all right with it actually. And that shatter me. I wanna read this series because obviously with Restore Me coming out, that's all I've heard about. I have FOMO about this series. I wanna know who Warner is. I wanna know why people love him and ship this and talk about this all the time. I wanna know if it's problematic or not for myself, you know? So I'm reading it. <laughs> about 100 pages in so far, guys, and it's all right, you know? I wasn't expecting it to be the best written thing ever, but it, it is a lot of fun, and it is kind of dystopian, and it's dark and moody, and I like that so far. So we'll see how I feel come the end of this book, because I know a lot of people trash this first one, but love the rest of the series. So we'll see, I'll let you know how I'm getting on with it. So let's go on to the books I still haven't picked up yet, but want to. The first one being Unravel Me, the sequel to that one. Um, yeah, I only picked up the first two from my library just to see how I got on with it, because I know, like I said, that one's supposed to be not the best thing in the world, but this one's supposed to be good, and it's a lot bigger as well. So yeah, pick this up probably straight after that one. <laughs> I was also very happy to see this book in my local library, which is Language of Forms by the very amazing Lee Bardugo. I obviously recently read the Grisha trilogy and I really, really, really enjoyed that series, you know, for what it was. And obviously I've read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, love that duology and this is just a lot of stories from the Grishaverse and I've heard amazing things about it even though it is just you know stories and it's beautifully illustrated too I mean I'm guessing you guys have all seen this already when it first came out I was thinking about getting my own copy but at least this way I can read it see if I like it and wanna, if I want to spend the money you know so the first book I really want to pick up like now is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence you guys this book can be summed up in two words, and that's assassin nuns. Need I say more? Now, a book that I recently found in a charity shop and I've been wanting to read for a while is Radio Silence by Alice Osman. Now, this, I believe, is a coming-of-age story. It's very introspective. I think it's about radio station, obviously. <laughs> But the reason I wanted to read this for so long was because I heard uh, Lala from Books and Lala talk about it so much and then my good friend Yasmin from Yasmin's Bookshelf has been raving about this as well and she said it's one of the best books she's read and I trust her opinion, definitely. I want to read this this month. So happy I found it in a charity shop. Honestly, I was thinking about buying it so many times. Yeah, so hyped for this. Guys, another new one that I'm hyped for is The Puppy War by F.R. Kang. Now, I've heard basically heard about this book by Pierre Ford talking about it on Twitter and I'm just so very intrigued. So from what I know about it, it's an adult fantasy, kind of inspired by Asian culture and we have characters in here with godlike power powers and there's like a war and we're following an orphaned young girl. That's all I really know about it but I know it's dark, it deals with darker themes so there's kind of, you know, trigger warnings for this but I don't know what they are yet <laughs> but I've heard so many good things about this book I'm just hoping it lives up to the hype for me Pierre never really does me wrong so yeah I'm excited to get into this but it's a chunker isn't it a book that I heard great things about last year but I never got around to picking up but I want to remedy that is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry now I think this won some awards I heard amazing things from a lot of the bigger UK booktubers and this is just beautiful isn't it it's one of the most beautiful books I actually own. Look <laughs> at that end paper action. So I believe this to be historical fiction and it's also very magical realism-like and it is liter literary contemporary fiction. And I'm intrigued by it because from what I know about it, it's about a young girl who has to move to Essex. However, there's this mythical Essex serpent roaming around. I, I don't know much, I really don't, but yeah, the hype is enough to get me to want to read it. <laughs> I'll let you know how I go on with it. The newest book from one of my favourite authors, so you know I had to get it, is Adjustment Day by Chuck Palnick. Now, I've heard not the so good things about it and it breaks my heart, but I obviously need to give it a go myself. Um, his books are always a hit and miss, but some of his favourites, some of you know my favourites of his, include Haunted and Lullaby and Invisible Monsters. 
So I, yeah, I need to give it a go, don't I? Um, so from what I know about it, it's about adjustment day is coming. Like I think it's like underground clubs and things that talk about the end of the world and they should be ready for this reckoning. I've heard it's kind of a strange writing style, um, but I'll give it a go and see what I think and let you know. Hopefully I enjoy it, even if a lot of people don't. Like I said, we'll see. <laughs> A sequel to a series that I started last month that I want to continue because I'm bad at continuing with series is Fire by Kristen Cashore. The first book is The Graceling, which I absolutely loved. It's a story about a girl who is an assassin and is graced at fighting, so basically she is kind of unstoppable and a bit of a warrior and the king's assassin, but she's a good girl at heart and she wants to save the world and the kingdom and there's war. It's great. Really enjoyed it. Would recommend if you want to hear my full thoughts on that book. I will link my May wrap up in the description. But yeah, I want to continue and see where this goes and I want more of Poe in my life. So I'm intrigued. Yeah, excited to carry on with this series. A book that I am on two minds about whether I'm going to like or not, but I'm just going to see is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. Now I loved Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda. I also loved the movie, Love, Simon, and this has those characters. Leah wasn't my favourite character from Love, Simon, but I do like her kind of sarky way of, you know, just how she is. So we shall see. I've not heard the best things about this one though, um, but it does have obviously LGBTQ plus rep and it's Pride Month, so why not, eh? Um, yeah, this one I was in two minds about buying, but it wasn't in my library and I was like oh do you know what I'll just I'll just take the plunge and see how I get on with it hopefully I love it guys I've been sleeping on my Stephen King thing that I was meant to be doing I still haven't bloody read The Shining haven't I so it's on this list I don't think I need to tell you what The Shining, Shining is I know I'm gonna love it I just need to bloody read it <laughs> now another big book I don't know why I do this to myself that I really want to read is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagara heard again mixed things about this one but I've heard it might make me cry. I've also heard it's kind of pretentious but I don't mind a bit of pretension every now and again. <laughs> All I know about this is it's about four friends who live in New York and it spans decades so I'm assuming it's about their friendship and the way that they change and grow as characters. We shall see. I've heard like I said mixed things about it but I do like these types of books. Hopefully I like this one. I'll let you know. A book that my friend has been on at me to read <laughs> is on it, Oryx and Craig by Margaret Atwood. And this is a dystopian. From what I've heard, it's one of the best dystopians out there. I've not read what it's about, but my friend says it's really bloody good and that I need to get to it. And yes, 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 yes. I do like Margaret Atwood's writing style. So this is happening. Connie, it's happening. <laughs> And lastly, I've put a thriller on this list, just in case I'm in the mood for a thriller, and that's The Dry by Jane Harper. Now, I've heard good, mostly good things about this book. So this book is set in Australia during a very bad drought, and I believe it's a murder mystery. I think there's someone who's going to have to go back to a small town and gets pulled into a murder investigation, something along those lines. Love that type of book. This one, apparently, is a real, real good one, so I've popped it in here, just in case I fancy it at some point. Lastly, you guys, I've been slacking on this TBR teapot thing that I started. I haven't pulled any books out of here in the last two months, and I really need to get on it. Here goes. Oh! I don't know if you can see that. Sorry guys, my camera just cut out on me. But the one I picked was Perfume by Patrick Susskind. This is a translated work of fiction and it's set in Paris and it's about a serial killer who chooses their victims based on, this, on how they smell as he has a very good nose. So yeah, intrigued by this one. I've been wanting to, meaning to read it for a bloody ages so now is the perfect time. Happy to have chose it. Everyone says it's real good. So yeah, gonna read this one as well this month. So those are my choices for this month you guys, let me know if you're reading any of these or have read any of these and your thoughts on them, always very happy to chat with you guys in the comments. So thanks for watching, I hope you're having a lovely day, if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe if you care to do so and I'll catch you in my next one, see you later, bye!